Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I bet you were like me and playing a ton of Super Mario 3D All-Stars on the Switch. Three classic 3D Mario games from the N64, the GameCube, and of course the Wii. Now, one of the big revelations that we've learned from this is that these games are mostly running on emulation. Now, what that means is we could potentially see more GameCube and Wii games, as well as N64 games, coming to the Switch. So I thought it was time for me to mention the 10 GameCube games that I would love to see potentially come to the Switch. I got them right here. Let's take a look. All right, well, I'm gonna start with a game I absolutely love. I feel like I talk about it all the time when it comes to the GameCube, and that is Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. So this is a psychological horror game that is unique to the GameCube, and it plays very similar to those traditional style Resident Evil games where there's lots of puzzles to solve and also lots of enemies to kill, all while trying to barely stay alive. However, the big feature here is something called a sanity meter, which is very Lovecraftian. So what that means is that your character's mental ability will diminish as you fight and kind of uncover the new horrors because it's very difficult for your brain to really comprehend and understand what you're looking at. And so you start losing sanity. And this game will mess with you in very creative ways with that sanity meter. However, I'm not going to spoil anything in this video because part of the fun of this game is just going in fresh if you've never played it before. And trust me, you're gonna find these things very fun and entertaining. The way the game messes with you is so awesome, so memorable. I also like how this game has you playing different characters throughout time, each one of them filling in part of the story. So every new chapter is both fresh and interesting, but then again, feeds back into the overall story. It's really cool. This is a fantastic game. It's the reason why I chose to put it first. It's definitely one of my favorites on the GameCube and it deserves to find a new audience on the Switch. Next up is a game called Gotcha Force. Now, you may have noticed that my copy here of Gotcha Force is in a protective sleeve. Well, that's because this game is now stupidly expensive, often selling for anywhere between $400 and $500. I guess it's because of the low print numbers and also the high demand. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I really wanna see it get re-released on the Switch, so more people can check this out. So as you can see by the gameplay footage here, this is an awesome arena style battling game where you find and collect these little gotcha toys that are also called Borgs for some reason. I guess they've got two names here. But anyways, basically what you do is you collect these things and then you fight each other in these big open arenas. And as you can see here, the graphics are pretty great and the gotchas are all very colorful and varied and the combat is just really satisfying to play. It kind of reminds me of a mix of, say, Super Smash Brothers with a little bit of Power Stone from the Dreamcast in there. Plus you've got the aspects of collecting, so it feels a little bit like Pokemon. I could see this game doing extremely well on the Switch, both for quick battles when you're you know, in handheld mode and you just have a couple minutes to play, or in long online matches if they supported that. I mean, if you were to play this with friends over the internet on the Switch, yeah, that would be pretty awesome. And then again, you know, just having the ability for more people to play it because it's such an expensive game if you try to get it physically. So having it on the Switch at a reasonable price, I think that'd be really cool. Next up is a game you don't hear that much about anymore and it's called Geist. So in this game, you play as a ghost that has the ability to possess both humans, creatures, and also inanimate objects. And then you try to navigate the game mostly in first person while you possess these different things. So at first glance, this game may look like a typical first person shooter, but trust me, it has way more strategy than that. For instance, in this footage here, you see I possess this soldier who is shooting at this boss and you'll shoot him and kind of stun him a little bit where he'll drop his grenade. And then what you do is you hop out of the soldier, you'll zip over to the grenade and possess that. Then you can kind of roll that grenade over to the enemy and then explode it. 
You can also possess plants to give you health. You'll hop from different person to person. Uh, you'll jump into rodents that'll allow you to get through cracks in walls. Uh, you can take over an ammo crate and then blow it up when soldiers get next to it. As you can see, it's a pretty cool premise and has some really neat ideas, even though, you know, it's technically probably not the best shooter that you've ever played. However, I think it's kind of unique enough and it only came out on the GameCube. So it would be nice if a new generation of Switch players were able to check it out, especially if they were able to fix some of the critiques of the original game, which included the kind of low frame rate. The game did perform kind of poorly on the original GameCube. So maybe porting it over to the Switch would help that a little bit. I don't know. I think it's actually a pretty cool game. I'd like to see it on Switch. I was recently talking to a friend of mine and I mentioned that I was gonna be doing this video on GameCube games I wanna see on the Switch. And the first words out of his mouth were, uh, you're gonna include Rogue Squadron 2, right? Oh yeah, baby, yes I am. So Star Wars Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2 is arguably one of the best launch titles of all time. And honestly, I think it's still one of the best, maybe at least in the top 10 Star Wars games ever made. It's amazing how, just how well this game turned out. And I guess it was created in a relatively short amount of time. It's such a great GameCube game. And I like how it functions as sort of a best of the original trilogy films. You know, those are the ones that were really close to my heart when I was growing up. We're talking about episode four, five, and six, right? And so this is kind of like the best of all of those elements packed into one game. It's brilliant. And as you can see by the gameplay footage here, it still looks and plays great today, almost 20 years after the original release. And again, that's one of the reasons why I think it really deserves to just get another life on the Switch. I mean, it'd be cool to play it in handheld mode. I think there's a lot of gamers out there who would love to replay this game. It's brilliant. And I don't know, Nintendo, bring it to the Switch, please. The next game I'd like to see on Switch is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Here's a turn-based tactical RPG that when it was first released on the GameCube, well, I think it found an audience that enjoyed it, but the series up to that point was relatively unknown, at least on consoles. You know, myself, when I think back to that time, I believe the first time I played this series was on the Game Boy Advance, and I absolutely loved it on that handheld. But it wasn't until years later that I picked up this GameCube version, played that, and I was like, wow, this is really good. However, all these years later, well, now the series is well known to strategy RPG fans that would probably love to check it out. But that physical GameCube version is stupidly expensive now. So it would be really cool to see this get a release on the Switch, you know, for fans who want to check it out and don't want to pay crazy prices for that physical version. It would be awesome. Next up is a really cool RPG called Botan Kaidos Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean. So this is a GameCube exclusive RPG series that I think really slipped under the radar a bit with fans, but man, it really impressed me back when I first played it. You play as a guardian spirit who interacts with a young boy who is seeking revenge for the wrongful deaths of some of his family members. And for the most part, this game plays like a traditional JRPG in that it has overhead exploration as well as turn-based combat. However, the game uses a card collecting system in combat where the spirits or essence of the world and creatures is captured and then utilized for your battles. Now, I'll admit that I'm not the biggest fan of these games where they have turn-based card battles. Typically, they are overly complex and sometimes kind of dull. I don't know why that necessarily is. However, for some reason, this game just didn't feel that way. It was one of the first and probably only card-based battle games that I played like this that I've really enjoyed. Plus, I think the graphics and gameplay still hold up today. Now, there was a sequel released also on the GameCube called Origins, and it would be cool to see both of those come to the Switch. I mean, if they're doing one, you know, bring the other, right? Oh yeah, here's another chance for me to talk about Metroid Prime 1 and 2. Now, here's the thing. A Metroid Prime trilogy has long been rumored for the Switch, and I do think it's gonna happen. I think it's inevitable, but as of the making of this video, we don't yet know when. So 
Again, I absolutely had to include it in this video then because we don't have it yet and we don't know when we're gonna get it. But thinking back when I first played these games, I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed them because, you know, at first glance, they look like typical first person shooters, but they actually have a lot of subtlety and nuance to the control as well as the level design. For instance, you end up scanning and searching the environment more than a typical first person shooter. I kind of felt like this was almost like an adventure game at times that also was a shooter. And by the way, the controls in this game are also just different enough to make it feel very unique to the series. If you've played this game, you know what I'm talking about, where it's not your typical Call of Duty or Halo controls or button layout. It's very specific and very unique to Metroid Prime. And in the beginning, I was very skeptical that a traditionally 2D platforming game like Super Metroid could transition to a first person shooter. But, you know, Nintendo pulled it off brilliantly. I mean, this is why fans continue to demand these games to come to Switch because we love playing them. And obviously I'm very excited to see what they do with the announced Metroid 4. When that comes out, that will be a day one purchase for me, hopefully in 2021. But to tide us over, it would be pretty cool to get the first three Metroid Prime games on Switch. Next up is a fan favorite, and it's also one of mine as well. That, of course, is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. So this is the second game in the Paper Mario series, and it's arguably one of the best. Now, if you're not familiar with the Paper Mario series, well, it's basically an action RPG where everything in the game is made and drawn on these kind of flat surfaces, almost like paper. And so I've always really appreciated the design of this series, but I also love the tongue in cheek humor in this series as well. And also the RPG elements that they've included in here, as well as exploring the environment, talking to NPCs, going on quests, and yes, the awesome battle system. For instance, it's cool when you battle someone because it transitions into a theater stage with an audience, and then you take turns attacking each other. Now, I like how it's a mix of strategy as well as real time, and it never gets old because as the game goes on, as it progresses, it gets more and more complex. This is an example of yet another GameCube game that I think really holds up. And again, it would be very cool for it to get an official release on the Switch. Oh boy, here is a little bit of a controversial one. As you can see here, it is Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. And it's uh, controversial because it's a remake of the original Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1. And there were a lot of changes and updates made to this game and some fans love them and others not so much. Now, the first one being, of course, is the graphics here. So, you know, going from the PlayStation 1 to the GameCube, there's just a generational leap in graphics here. And I think it looks pretty good. However, the controls were updated to play more like Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty from the PlayStation 2. But of course, this is the GameCube. And so some compromises had to be made to make it fit on that controller. And uh, yeah, it's not the best. Also, the character audio was re-recorded, mostly using the same voice actors. And then also the cutscenes were also recreated and then tweaked slightly. Also, the enemy AI was updated for this version and some fans felt that it was just too big of a change. It kind of made the game in some levels too easy and then others too difficult. And so I get it. I mean, the original is considered a masterpiece and obviously loved by millions of fans, but I also do like this version of it. I feel like it kind of parallels it a little bit. It doesn't take away from you playing the original at all. You can still obviously do that, but I think this is kind of an interesting modern remake of that game. And so I do like the visuals and, you know, I did find that the controls were pretty intuitive. I didn't have that much of a problem with them. And so since this was a GameCube exclusive, I think it's worth revisiting it on the Switch. I think it'd be pretty cool because, you know, there's nothing stopping them from going and tweaking the controls again or addressing some of the things that people weren't crazy about. But I like it. I think it'd be cool for it to get a new audience again on the Switch. All right, guys, well, that is 10 GameCube games that I personally would love to see come to the Nintendo Switch. But we have barely just tapped into the GameCube library. There are so many awesome games on that system and awesome games deserve to live on. So now that we know that official emulation is possible on the Nintendo Switch, 
at least for the N64, the GameCube, and the Wii, what games would you like to see them eventually release for this awesome handheld? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Yeah.